Good afternoon, everybody. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Provost. Sarah Davis was born in Cowden, County Durham, England, in 1984. She was raised with an inherent sense of running a business from an early age. As her parents, Sue and Frank, who are here today, just over here, I'm going to embarrass them, um, owned a decorating store since she was born. The business called Weir Valley Decorating Centre was run by her mum, Sue, and is now run by her sister, Helen, and is called Decorating Centre Online. Frank, her dad, was an engineer. Sarah graduated from the University of York with a first-class business degree in 2006. She had great support from one of our leading academics, Dr. Lynn ba Baxter, who I'm going to embarrass now by pointing her out. <laughs> he was very instrumental in Sarah's career. Whilst at the university, Sarah was introduced to the world of crafting during a placement in a small craft company. It was here that she spotted a gap in the market for a tool that could create bespoke envelopes for handmade cards. And with the aid of her retired engineer father, Frank, and a local carpenter, she designed a product called the Enveloper. Sarah launched her innovative product on the TV chopping channel, Ideal World, selling 30,000 units within six months. It was the craft product to have. By the time she graduated, the business she had established, Crafter's Companion, was turning over 500,000 pounds. How determined Sarah must have been to be working hard on her business while studying for her finals. A key breakthrough for the business was Sarah's foray into the US market. Sarah researched the market for several years and acquired a small business in California to build from and set up their own TV shopping channel. And by 2009, the US business was larger than the one in the UK. In 2012, Sarah's company diversified into arts products with the brand Spectrum Noir. Today, Crafters Companion is a global retailer specializing in craft and creative products and has its headquarters and global warehouse in Newton Aycliff, County Durham. It exports crafting supplies to more than 40 countries worldwide and employs hundreds of people both in the UK and at its US head office in California. The company also has its own live streaming channel, Crafters TV, where Sarah and a team of craft experts demonstrate new products and teach crafting techniques to their craft community who tune in from countries all over the world. Sarah has been recognized with a number of awards for her work as an entrepreneur. In 2010, she's a, she was awarded the Ernst & Young Emerging Entrepreneur of the Year Award. In 2013, she was presented with the Entrepreneur of the Year at the Shell Women of the Year Awards and she was listed in startups.co.uk, Young Guns Entrepreneurs of the Year class of 2015. Sarah was appointed member of the Order of the British Empire in 2016 New Year's Honours list for services to the economy. She has also been the recipient of two Lloyds Bank National Business Awards the Santander Small to Medium Sized Business of the Year Award in 2010 and the Outstanding Contribution to British Business Award in 2019. Her company was also awarded the Queen's Award for Enterprise for International Trade in 2020. In April 2019, Sarah joined BBC One's Dragon's Den as the show's youngest ever female investor. She was actually invited to pitch on the show 13 years prior, but her business was actually doing too well to fit the requirements for Dragon's Den. She also recites the story of how her fran friend rang up the BBC, posing as a potential entrepreneur to pitch, but instead asked that Sarah be considered as a female dragon. All a big ploy for Sarah to finally be asked to be part of Strictly Come Dancing a lifelong dream of hers. On her first day in the den, they were all invited to taste the snacks of street food entrepreneur. And when Tuka Suleiman bounced up first, 
Sarah said, hang on a minute, ladies first. To which the experienced dragon, Deborah Meaden replied, Sarah, we are all equal here. We are all dragons. Some of you may, rem may remember that. Sarah, I watch Dragon's Den regularly and I've been struck by your insightful advice and your flair and your humor. You were a great role model, a young entrepreneur flying the flag for females in business. Your story is very inspiring for our students to see not only someone successful that, they, that that's they, they have heard of, but someone who actually started their business at university. In September 2021, Sarah joined the cast of the 19th series of Strictly Come Dancing, where she was partnered with Aliash Sharinak. They made a great pairing, which continued in the Strictly Live tour, which followed in January 2022. And the two families have become very close friends. Sarah broke the Strictly Come Dancing record some of you may remember this, by being bottom of the leaderboard in week one with 17 points, and then top of the leaderboard in week two with 34 points. Incredible. If you remember, it was a foxtrot, which is Ali Asher's favorite dance. And now I have a scoop for you, a scoop heard only here today and Sarah will launch a new book in 2025 called The Six Minute Entrepreneur with 52 lessons. And we'll start a new series in March 2024 called Making It, which will profile leading investors and their journeys in turn, to turn their ideas into a reality. Sarah is infused by the University of York's plans to become an entrepreneurial university which will be led by both Enterprise Works and the School for Business and Society, really creating a culture of entrepreneurship right across the university. So today, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Vice-Chancellor, for her years of leadership and dedication in pioneering entrepreneurship, for sharing her skills and knowledge on Dragon's Den and showing the opportunities for young female entrepreneurs, it is with great pleasure that I present to you Sarah Davis for the degree of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. By the power vested in me by the University of York, I take great pleasure in conferring on you the degree of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Oh, Craigie. Thank you, Bob. Why, he didn't have to do his research, did he? I've written a little speech, but it's, did you know these have pockets in? Just learned that earlier. Um, yes, thank you so much for those kind words. Am I allowed to call you Bob or is it Dr. Doherty? Thanks, Bob. Um, honestly, what an absolute honour it is to be here. I, I, can't, I can't put into words, and I, and I remember being exactly where you were. It's 18 years. My mum and dad were sitting up in that top corner for me, and I did the little scooch on and the wave up in the corner thinking, don't embarrass me and scream out, mum. Um, but, you know, it was this, it was this very hall. It, it just brings back so many memories. And I just remember at the time just being buzzing, so excited about everything that I'd learned at university and ready for that kind of next chapter in my life. And as Bob said, you know, I started, I started the business at university, so I was a good nine months into the business by the time I graduated. So I have to say, I spent probably three of the happiest years of my life here, and, and, and I'm a pretty happy person, and I've had a damn good life. So it's a big thing for me to say that. Um, I was a Derwent undergraduate, D-block, around the corner, any Derwent D-blockers in? <laughs> Tumbleweed. They were, there was talk of knocking it down when I was there. I heard they'd made it a grade two listed building now, so no chance of that. Um, right. 
It's, it's no exaggeration when I, I want to impress on you that it was my time here that really shaped my, my career and drive as a business owner and an entrepreneur. As Bob said, I, I started my university, I started my business crafters companion when I was still at university in my final year. Um, now at the time, the management students, uh, the management school, believe it or not, they only took 30 students a year. So that I was one of only 30 in the management school. Um, and most of them came to read management because they had aspirations to go on and become managers within organizations. I was the only student out of all 30 of us who had the aspiration to be an entrepreneur and to manage my own company. And I was so thrilled years later when I came back to speak at the university. And by this point, we had hundreds of students every year. And I asked for a show of hands how many people were, were looking to follow the same career path as me. And it was about a third of the students in the class. And then to sit today and have lunch with the team and, and hear about the drive for entrepreneurialism and the vision that this university has now has filled me with such pride and energy. I do so much work out there now, working with people who are aspiring entrepreneurs. You know, we, we make up the backbone of the British economy. I think it's so important to have that bedded in at, at this level. Now, my kind of intention as I came to university was to learn as much as I could, take it away, and as Bob said, I was gonna go home and I was gonna teach me mum and dad how business was done in the 21st century. Right? That was my plan, and I'd read it all in textbooks, and these lecturers had told me that's how you do business, so I must be right. Um, and it was a four-year course I did, where you did two years studying, and then you went and worked for a year. And it was when I did that uh, sandwich placement year, and I went out to work for a, a small family-run business in the craft industry. And I'll be really honest, it's not like I was an avid crafter that had aspirations to start up a business here. I fell into this industry on that sandwich year, but I fell in love with the industry. I fell in love with the people who crafted, and I felt so passionate about it, I wanted to start a business in that area. And um, I came back to university in the September of my final year with a head full of magic, a load of ideas, and if there's one thing that you'll learn about me is if I'm doing something, we're starting it yesterday. You know, I'm not gonna wait till I graduate, we, we, we're on that path now. And I remember getting back in the September and starting the business in the October and trying to juggle running the business. I lived on Fifth Avenue at the time. I was running the business. Uh, I lived with four of the management students. I thought, well, you know, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. And I had them on writing business plans and marketing plans for me. And then when I'd go to lectures, they would answer the phone. I had a phone line and a fax machine installed and trained them all in how to make handmade envelopes so that they could troubleshoot with the little old ladies who bought me enveloper off the TV, didn't know how to make a, a five by seven inch envelope. They could talk them through it on the phone. Um, and that's kind of how I started the universe. Uh, that's how I started the business. And I and I just think it's it's one of those it's one of those things. You know, I had I had the passion, the drive, and the determination. And I remember so many people saying to me, "Well, can you not just wait? You know, you'll graduate in the summer, and then you can start the business. And you don't want to let your studies go by the wayside. You've worked so hard for two years. You don't want to fall at the last hurdle." You know, I was on for a first class honours degree and everybody was convinced that there's no way I could do the studying I needed to keep that up and also be able to run the business. And I was determined. I was determined to make a, a, a success of the business and I was determined to show everybody that I really could do what I wanted if I put my mind to it. And I, I look back now on that year of my life and I don't actually know how I got through it. It was just ridiculously long hours. I remember falling asleep on a night reviewing my papers for the dissertation because I had to be up at eight o'clock the next morning and start dealing with the customer inquiry emails. And, and I just did it with a, a hell of a lot of drive and determination. And I think, you know, as Bob said, when I graduated that summer, I, I came out at the end of it and I got the first class honours degree. And, and it, was, it was down to the support and help of, of my friends, the other students that, that, that were there with me and showed the belief in me. And also, as Bob mentioned, you know, Lynn, one of my tutors, she was there for me every step of the way, supporting me in both my personal life when I was trying to juggle everything and my professional life. And, and I remember she, she coached me through writing my dissertation using my own business as a case study. You know, if you think all them hours and hours you spend writing this stuff, and you think it's for the sake of academia. I remember taking that dissertation that I wrote and then the first, the first business meeting I went to with Business Link to help me support the business, I handed them my dissertation and I said, this is what I'm gonna do. 
all this research I've spent the last year doing, I'm going to put it into practice in my own business. And, and it really was powerful and meaningful. So it, the, it's no lie when I say that you know, the university really did set me up for success in that next stage of my life. As Bob said, I now have a, a global business. I, uh, we employ hundreds of people, turning over tens of millions of pounds. And then my side hustle is my investment portfolio, as I say, and then my hobby is my fledgling TV career. Um, and I just, I, I feel like that year I did at York when I learned to juggle everything and believe in myself and know that if I kept going, I, I would get there, has set me up with the, you know, the, the real mantra of, of what gets me through life now. So if, I, if there's one thing I want you to all take away from today, from me standing here telling you my story, it's that you all have what it takes to achieve whatever it is you want to go on and achieve in your life. You just need to have that drive, determination, and more important than anything else, the self-belief, and that will see you through. So good luck in the next chapter of your life. I hope it's as exciting as you as it, it has been for me, and congratulations on getting to today.